The legendary Steens Mountain rises alongside the Alvor Desert with deep glacier carved gorges, sweeping sagebrush landscapes. Much of this crowned jewel is permanently protected wilderness area. Out here, any hunt will all but guarantee that you will cover many miles of this broken country. We begin my dad's hunt for antelope by returning to the same area that I had hunted mule deer the year prior, putting those mountain miles to use once again. Western hunt come true right here. Seen anything wild as you. Him and those deer came in 30 yards from me. It's so awesome when it comes together. There he is. To be in this moment right now is like it's pretty unreal. Absolutely perfect, but we got it done. It's, oh my gosh. Yes, thank you, God. <laughs> We pack for the day with a sense of urgency, excited to leave the comfort of camp behind, anxious at the opportunity to get on the mountain and behind the glass. We are racing the quickly rising sun. The miles that are in front of us go by quickly into the brilliant views of the mountains and bluebird skies. Yesterday we came out and did a little scouting and Right across this ridge right here in front of me, we spotted about 20 does. There was one small buck with them. And then Robbie saw a herd of bucks. And you know we could tell they were bucks, but couldn't tell the quality. Uh, but there was a good number of them. So we kind of decided to wait till this morning to come in and get, get a look at them. We just got dumped on in the hail. As soon as I get back in my glass, I find another new antelope buck. From those rim rocks down into that valley swale, they're all, there's a, just a bunch of them out there. I found one in the hail storm, but I don't think this one's gonna be a go either. I can't believe they all didn't get up with that hail pail. Mm -hmm. That might be one inch hail. They're pretty big. They're pretty big. <laughs> there's half a dozen over there but uh, they're moving now. Yeah. I think it's afternoon feeding time is what it is. I just don't think he's, if his cutters were way above his ears, I just don't think he's what you're looking for, Dad. over there. Dad said he saw some antelope cross over on this side of the canyon. So we just dropped down off the mules and came up this side. We're gonna pop over behind one of these big juniper trees and see if we can get eyes on these antelope. I don't know if there's any bucks in the group or not, but uh, 
we're here to antelope hunt, so we're gonna go take a look. There's a buck. I cannot tell. Can't tell what that buck is, so. And they're moving the wrong way. Buck's going the wrong direction. He's a long ways away. I think we ought to just back out of there. Try to get eyes on him again tomorrow when, yeah. when the mirage kicks down a little bit or something. The tradition of navigating mountain landscapes with horses and mules is my family's way of reconnecting with a bygone way of life. It's our opportunity to get away from the modern means of travel, to enjoy a slower pace, experiencing beautiful wild country as it has been since the dawn of time. With the slower pace, we truly get to experience the ruggedness of these wild landscapes and a small glimpse into the life of an antelope. They're all nine to 12 inches, probably the biggest one's 12 inches. It's definitely the biggest one we've seen in three days of hard hunting. We've probably looked at 20 bucks, maybe more. I'm a hunter. I like to hunt them all. Uh, better than those you have hanging on your wall. It's better than the ones I got hanging on my wall, yes. That's right, Robbie. You keep them in check. Yeah. We got the antelope buck and we're making a move on. There's a lot of cattle in here, so we're kind of trying to hide behind this cow because it's pretty open. And uh, hopefully we can get within shooting distance of this buck. He's a good buck. That stock didn't quite work on that buck, did it? No. No, we kind of blew the stock. We probably should have went down further and come up. I don't think we necessarily blew it, but he, he wasn't very settled when we left here. I'm pretty sure that's him. If not, it's another big buck, and he's all by himself. Looks like a good spot, Dad. He's 330, 1-6. I'm ready. Hold on, Dad. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It's 430 yards. Two and a half. There, that got him. <sighs> Good job. Yeah, thank you. Good job. Let's go. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. A little bit of drama there. Just a little bit of drama. Do you see why I practice so much? Oh, it's hard. It's wiggling. So hard. Oh my gosh. Well, That's I a hope... good sign. I can see horn well above his ear. Yeah, he's well oh, above his ear. Oh, he's a beautiful. Yeah, beautiful that's, goat. Look at that's him. A nice Holy buck. smokes. This week, all week long, we've been looking at these bucks, and their cutters have been way below the ears. He's out of 20 bucks, he's probably the best. He's the first one we found where his cutters were way above his ears. And you can see there, his cutters are two inches above his ears. Yeah, he's right out here in the open, ain't a blade of grouse out here. So, you know, you, we come in behind a big tree up there and, and even then he spotted us. It's amazing how they can see. To experience a Steen's mountain hunt, one must invest a great deal of time. For my dad, this hunt represents 15 years of waiting for this one perfect moment. But the most important part is that together as friends and family, we were blessed with the opportunity to cast our eyes upon the beautiful sights as we let the drum of hooves carry us across the vast landscapes. <laughs>